Um, these are tips that can be accessible to, uh, applicable to anyone, but you need to ask yourself, what do you want to say, what do your users need, and who are your users? So, number one, people do not read on the web. They skim. This has been proven time and time and time again. It's very important to create attractive copy that holds the reader's attention. You can have great resources, but if they're not communicated in an easy to read way, you're going to lose the user. Web readable copy is concise. Cut all the words that you have in half and then cut it in half again. Remember, less is not more, less is less, and we want less is less. Web readable copy is scannable. You're going to use things like bulleted lists, HR lines, headers. Web readable copy is objective. You're going to use neutral language. Avoid exaggerated or subjective language like amazing, awesome, incredible, spectacular, that, you know, the best. Um, and uh, Jacob Nielsen has a great uh, page on how users read on the web. And everything that I just said to you about concise, scannable, and objective is all here right on this page. And by the way, all of these resources are in my guide. Other things to do um, is to make use of chunking. Copy chunking is when you break things out so the eye can scan through easier. So use headers um, to imply deprecation. It's also incredibly important for screen readers, and I'll talk about that in a bit. Use bulleted lists. Use parallel parallelisms, it's a hard word to say, um, and I'll show you an example of that. People see patterns and anticipate what's happening next. Use tables for tabular content. Use line breaks. Line breaks actually stop the eye. Use special containers. And I'm going to show all of this to you when we get to the end. Be strategic about your copy. Okay? Remember, front load your important content and reduce the amount of copy. Less isn't more, less is less. There's a uh, very famous F-shaped map on the Jacob Nielsen site that shows you how people read a web page. And when you think about the F map, um, you, you're thinking top center, top middle are the important areas to front load your content. Start your sentences with action carrying verbs. You know, see what I did there? A little bit of a library pun. Um, so avoid writing in the passive voice. If you would like to renew your books, just say renew books. And um, things like get a library card, check out books, read these articles, access resources. Start your sentences with action carrying verbs. Try to avoid jargon as much as humanly possible. I saw a question earlier where someone was like, well, how do I not use the word database? I understand sometimes it's unavoidable, it's just part of the language, but where you can try to avoid it, you know, and you can see here in my sample sentence, there are many places to avoid it. Use natural language, be informal. Use you or I rather than third person terms like the library and the patron. And use contractions. You don't have to say you are, just say your. Um, it also allows the person, the user, to connect with your writing, which promotes your main cognitive load. And consider creating headers that are questions, which also connects to the user. When you're thinking about writing, think about writing in a helpful tone rather than a legal or bureaucratic tone. Don't use click here. People know a link when they see it. To that end, avoid using underlining when you're writing web copy because people will think it's a link. Serif fonts are difficult to read. So uh, use serif fonts, although they're very pretty, use them for just headers or box titles and use sans serif fonts for your body copy. So here is um, the difference between sans serif and serif. And serif just has the little hats. And this is a great site called CSS Font Stack, which has a list of tons of web safe fonts. Um, use color with purpose. Like your box borders, colors are intended to attract the reader's eye. So use them to show importance. Um, and when you're thinking about using colors, think about accessibility and appropriate color contrast. So 
Um, there's a tool called Web Aim Contrast Checker, and if you put in your colors, it tells you if it passes the test. For example, if you try to use white text on a gold background, there's not enough contrast for someone who might be colorblind to be able to see and read those words. So you can use your color checker to make sure that you have appropriate color contrast. Avoid caps. Why so angry? Comes across as yelling. On that same token, use bolding and italics sparingly. Where possible, use images. Images are more than a thousand words. There are many, many thousands of words. And annotated screenshots are even better. There are lots of tools that you can use to create annotated screenshots, and I list a few at the end of my presentation. And last but not least, centered copy is hard to read. The irony, of course, being that everything in my presentation is centered. 